Good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday to you on today. May you have grace wherever you may be traveling, whether it's to work, on a trip, to the store, to breakfast, wherever you may be going shopping, may you have grace out there on the road. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of people, a lot of angry people. There's people that will cause accidents. There's people that will participate in road rage, several types of accidents, hit and runs, all types of things. So may you have grace as you travel today. May God give you peace. May you just be so fulfilled with his glory and honor that you will be able to enjoy your day and, and, and even go into the weekend being truly happy and blessed. A joy that the world did not give to you and the world cannot take away. And so let's get into this. This is a living hope. And I want you to know that we do have a living hope in Christ Jesus. We have a living hope. And first Peter three, first Peter chapter one, three through five, the King James Version. And let's read that in any version that you may have, but we're going to read that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again until a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So I want you to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Did you know the city of Corinth had a reputation for ungodliness? Now, if anybody has read the book of Corinthians, you will know that they had a reputation for ungodliness. The believers there had once been no different from non-believers. And we see that today. They were no different than non-believers. And it's very, you know, you might say, mm, and that's why a lot of people are talking about they don't go to church anymore because they don't see a change in believers versus non-believers. They see a lot of nonsense going on in the church and foul things and theft and, and immorality. They see a lot of stuff and deceit and malice and deception and wickedness and envious. They see a lot of that stuff in the church. And so a lot of people have strayed away from the church and they have been disappointed in the church. And they believe that the leaders in the church and the apostles and ministers and pastors have failed them. And so a lot of people I see, uh, they, they've moved away from the church. And when I read certain comments about how they don't go to church no more and things like that. And so they're no different than non-believers. So you can imagine what the people in the world are feeling that once were members of a church and no longer attend church, no longer participate in the church. They say they read their Bible and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to judge anyone because we have been in a big pandemic for some years now. And, and I say some years, a few years. And yes, uh, people had to stop going to church and there were Zooms and Google Zoos and, and there were videos where people still try to engage and even the prayer lines engaging in church. But a lot of people still didn't return to the building of the church because the church is in you. But a lot of people did not return to the actual church and they still have it. And you see it more and more today. You hear it more and more today why people do not attend church. And some don't attend regularly. Some come only on Easter, Christmas, or if they have a Thanksgiving service. But you see a lot of people uh, refuse to go to church. And so Paul is wanting to let you know that there is no difference than the believers that was in the church of Corinth filled with sexual immorality, greed, envy, wickedness, deceit, and malice. But now they were new creations, indwelt by the Holy Spirit and adopted to God's family. The Corinthian lifestyle no longer fit who they had become in Christ. And now if you're in the word in, in Christ, you know that you're to fellowship. Don't forget to assemble yourselves together with like-minded people, right? And that is true. The Bible says that. So I'm not here to point fingers and place blame or to judge. If you choose not to go to church, that is your choice. That is your decision. But however, Paul wants you to know that if you are a believer in Christ and you have accepted him and reconciled back to Christ, then you're always, your old ways. You do not have to be influenced by those old ways and the old patterns of thinking. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through 11. 
the apostle was not warning them that they might miss out on the kingdom. He wasn't warning them of that. But instead, he was encouraging them to abandon old ways and bring their behavior in line with who they really were, children of God, who you really are. And if you are a child of God, then your behaviors and ways need to be in line with who you really are a child of God or children of God, who are you, whoever you are out there listening to this video. And you see, we too should know that salvation is permanent and faith ought to have a positive effect on our conduct. If we have faith, then we should have a positive effect on our conduct and our conduct should be able to show others the positive effect. It should manifest outwards. If it's a positive effect inward, it should manifest outward for others to see. You agree with that? I agree with that, that if we are walking upright and living our life the way that God has called us to, our effect that we have, our positiveness should manifest on others and our light to show, so shall shine before people. See, our Savior willingly paid the penalty for our sins satisfying divine justice and the law's demands, Romans 3, 25 through 26. No one can undo what God has accomplished in saving us. No one can undo what God has already done, my brothers and sisters, my friends and family, and even visitors may come and stop by. No one can undo what God has accomplished in saving us, namely pardoning our sins, giving us a new nature and adopting us into his family. Did you know that we were adopted already into God's family? And I believe that I did a video on that some time ago. We have already been adopted into God's family. Knowing what his wonderful grace has accomplished should motivate us to live in our new identity as his children. So if anyone is proclaiming Christ as their Lord and Savior, we are his beloved, then it ought to reflect outwardly, right? It ought to reflect outwardly. And I like to reflect in the world. And so we don't have to live the old way and the old way of thinking because we are a living hope and we have a living hope in Christ Jesus. And so if you want to be able to read the Bible in one year, you can also read Genesis chapters 20 through 23. And I pray that someone will be inspired by this message today. I pray that you will share this video with someone and even you being inspired by this message today. May God bless you all on today. Peace. I'll see you soon. Talk to you soon.